All right, we have worked literally on thousands of total knee replacements. By we, I mean Bob, myself, Mike. We've done it for years, and we know firsthand what's going to get you the best results overall. And for the best results, you want to know what you need to do before having surgery. And that's the point. Most of our patients have had prehab, or in other words, classes prior to surgery, but most of them have not followed through on doing their exercises prior to surgery, and that's critical. So unless your surgeon orders you not to do them, which in certain cases that happens, if a knee is just too worn out or it's very painful, they might not have you do them, but it's important to do them if it's applicable for you because you're gonna improve your range of motion and get better strength before the replacement, making the recovery process go faster. Absolutely, better results. The better shape you are before going in, the better results afterwards. All right, the primary goals with prehab is to get full range of motion. In other words, that sore knee, the one that's going to get uh, surgery, full extension, as well as much flexion as possible. Once you have that, then you also want to get as much strength, mostly in the quadriceps in the hamstrings. However, you do not want to ignore the hip strength because that will be affected by a weak knee. We'll show you that as well. And you want to make sure to do these exercises one to two times a day and start roughly about a month before surgery because, again, after surgery, these are going to become a lot easier and your knee rehab is going to go smoother. That's right. And a nice thing about the prehab, the exercises you do after surgery are very similar and some are actually identical. All right, so typically it's about four weeks prior to surgery you'll be starting these. And for range of motion, a real common uh, exercise, if you have a smooth floor, you take a towel, put it down, and then you simply what we call wax the floor. So you go back and forth to get range of motion in the joint. Now you want to have full extension, so what you're going to do is slide it all the way out, toes come up, and get that knee to fully extend. It may already go to full extension, then you're done, you don't have to work that. If not, you can compare to the other leg. If this one is here and this one's down here, we need to get them to be equal. Uh, doesn't always happen, it depends how bad your knee is, but it will help come this direction. You'll do 10 more this way and then come under this way. You can take this foot on the heel or the toe and give it a little pressure to get the flexion you can actually grab it like this if you have enough mobility and pull it up here to get full range of motion. Not everyone will get that either, but the whole idea is to increase the range of motion. Now, we do have uh, another option that works very well. Uh, Mike is going to show it right now, especially if you don't have a smooth floor. Okay, now this is a really nice option. You can use this tool, it's known as a knee glide. It works excellent for knee replacements. It looks like this, it's built very well and it's very light. Mike's gonna demonstrate on how it works. So right now I have it set up for knee extension like Brad was showing earlier. So I go out as far as I can and I hold it, kind of lean forward and press down. Whatever is tolerable for you, do not make it hurt more than it already is. And you're also gonna stretch the hamstrings a little bit here. If you haven't had extension range motion your hamstrings are probably tight and they have to learn to elongate again so not only is your joint bothering you but these muscles have to get stretched out as well now if I want to work on flexion meaning bringing my knee back you're gonna have to scoot it a little more under your chair for that and you can bring it back it slides real nice and easy like this if you're like me and have bad ankle range of motion you can certainly bring your heel up but it's not gonna hurt the amount of knee bending you're having you might want to get a chair that doesn't have something right here because I'm hitting this right now but bring it back as far as you can you can also also assist with the other leg to bring it back and hold it there as well. You can hold it for 10 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever you can tolerate. Do that 5 or 6 times. There's one more big advantage to the knee glide is it has a stilt and so you can actually go downhill. Now we've found with experience that sometimes the range is really accelerated by going downhill because of the angle of the knee, the ankle, as well as moving downhill. So there you go. All right, now if your knee is so painful, it's hard, it, it's very painful to walk on and doing this is uncomfortable, uh, you can actually do this uh, you know, on your couch, long seated or in your bed and it works very well. You can simply work it like this. And the real big advantage is if you're having a hard time getting full flexion this way, we're gonna show you how you can use a belt with that. 
So what you do to get more knee flexion is simply take a belt, go around down by your ankle, and you're up in here, you're just simply gonna pull and stretch that stretch. And usually you'll have to go a little lower, you get better leverage, you'll figure that out very quickly. Okay, and then for full extension, now if you're by yourself, you just simply lock down like this. If you have some, someone you trust, they can give you gentle pressure or simply go up in a long seated position to get full extension there. And you can also work it like this and pull here. It's just a real another handy option. And you really do need a knee glide to do the option. The great thing about this is you will use this in bed after surgery as well because it's going to be sore for that first week. Another option if you do not want to have a knee glide or you're sick of doing floor scrubs is if you have some type of bike of sorts or a fitness membership at a gym, you can certainly use a bicycle there. Or if you have a pedaler at home, you can do that as well. Now, the closer you are to the pedals, the harder it's going to be to flex your knees like this. So if this was further away from me, it would be a lot easier to flex my knees. So what you want to do is start with a rocking motion. If that's easy and tolerable, you could certainly do full range of motion. Go forward and backwards. You see the closer I get to the pedal, so they'll be adjusting the seat on a stationary bike the more knee flexion I'm gonna get you can also you know go further away if you want to work on your knee extension and pushing them straight as well I would start with no resistance to begin with just get the range of motion going if you have the full range of motion and it feels good you could certainly add resistance but that's gonna be more for strengthening that's right. And again, if you have a stationary bike as opposed to using this uh, Mike mentioned it the height or the lower, how high you have the seat or how much you lower, it's gonna be critical. So you have to work with that carefully. Okay, what we're gonna do next is some strengthening exercises. You have your range of motion. Now one thing to do a basic quadricep strength is to simply kick out like this as high as you can and down. So it's not like this, it's meaningful and slow. Hold it and go back down, that's one. And that's two, and when you do it like that, you will definitely notice a big difference versus a uh, short, I call it cheating. So uh, if this is too easy, you can do 10 of them, and it's like you need some more resistance. You can simply add an ankle weight. I've had people that doesn't have ankle weight simply put on a winter boot. If you live in the south where it's warm, you know, put on a heavier shoe. It doesn't take more than a couple pounds to make a difference and do the same thing. Three sets of 10 would be great before, after surgery, you'll get to that, but it'll be a couple, three weeks for sure. Another way to make it harder is just to hold it up there for three seconds. An and isometric? then go down because you get a isometric strengthening right. at the top. I'm going to show you on the knee glide, if the knee glide is easy and your range of motion is good, you could certainly do this with an ankle cuff like this as well, or a boot, as Brad was saying. I don't know if the boot will fit too well on this foot plate, but maybe, It'll fit. maybe cowboy boots would. It'll fit. Do you have a pair of those? Shut up. Show them the <laughs> exercise. <laughs> so I just go back and forth like this. And obviously, to make it a little more challenging, you want to put the kickstand up. And then you can go uphill, making it more challenging for the quads. If I want to turn it around like this, it's going to be more challenging for the hamstrings because I'm pulling towards me with some weight to resist it. And actually, with the hamstrings, I've rarely had to put ankle weights on someone. Typically, without the weights is adequate to work on it. Um, Let's go on. There's other options for hamstring strengthening. Yes. Another way to get those hamstrings stronger, if you do have some resistance bands like this, or this is a loop band, put it on something solid like a handrail for your steps or a piece of furniture that's very heavy. Uh, and you do need a loop, so it's nice if you have these. You simply just loop them together and you have your loop. Loop bands obviously don't need that. And just put it on your ankle like this, get the distance proper so that you pull it under and you'll definitely get a hamstring strength and naturally change your resistance simply by moving your chair in or out for more resistance. Three sets of 10 is the goal. Start out with 10, see how that goes. Don't overdo it the first week. Another simple exercise to try if you feel comfortable with the other ones are just some basic mini squats. So you're just going to bend your knees a little bit and then straighten back up. Do not do a full range of motion squat. Do what your knees can handle. Try to get some bend and some straightening in it. Hold on to something for support. You can do it at a stairwell, a countertop, behind a chair like Brad is going to demonstrate. And just try to do 10 reps each set and try to do three sets if it's possible for you. 
So the big thing is, like Mike mentioned, is don't go down too far. If you go too far and your knee starts to hurt, you may collapse and fall and it would be a big problem. So if you feel that way, have a chair behind you so you can sit pain-free. Be cautious. Take it easy. If it starts to hurt here, you're done. Go back up. Don't think a little pain is okay. More pain is better because that's not the way to do it. Good precautions, stay safe, and that knee will get stronger. And the last part is hip strengthening because the hip is connected to the knee, so we want to strengthen that as well. So the first exercise is just going to be marching or hip flexion. You can alternate or just do one leg at a time. Hold on to something for support. You could do it at a chair like Brad, countertop. Hold on to a cane if you feel steady. And just make sure you feel safe with this. Do 10 repetitions on each leg. If it feels too easy and you go up to two or three sets of 10, you want more weight, simply take that ankle weight and put it on. Again, a pair of shoes, heavier shoes, you know, offers more resistance. So out to the side, make sure you don't, show them the wrong way to do it, Mike, where you comp it. Yeah, not that. Just the leg is moving. There you go. You won't go as high, but that's okay. Toes pointed straight ahead. You're going to feel this on both hips as well, and you're just going to do 10 reps. And then once you're done, switch legs. Yes. You get work on both legs because as you're trying to balance here, this leg is working as well. And where you do hip extension, make sure the knee stays straight. We're not doing this. We have already done that. We're working hip, knee straight, and kick behind you. Again, not this. That will not help. This is what you'll want to do. And again, wait if you want. 10 to 15 reps. Three. Work up to three sets if it's tolerable for you. That's right. Both legs. It's all good. Once again, prehab. What you do before is really going to make a difference because it gets the knee prepared. And you're already ready for the after surgery rehab. You will be prepped and very studious and ready to go. <laughs> Your surgeon will be proud and you will be happy because you'll be going to the ballroom dance. <laughs> yes, yes, there are people are going to be doing the waltz, the polka, and even the jitterbug. I can't do those and my <laughs> knee is fine. <laughs>